here we are outside South Facing Portico. Normally these shelves are quite packed, but again, from the description of who stays in and who goes out on the daily, this is what my Blooming Alley South Facing grow space looks like outdoors at the moment. Very, very spread out. And it all looks a little bit like, where are my orchids? How come it is so crowded in the summer? And well, I just feel like I'm moving a lot of orchids outside, but I have a lot more space. Anyway, it doesn't make much sense to me how this is so spacious because I'm not even using the east facing rack and yet I've got so much space here. It's so different from the winter of 20 to 21. Anyway, that's not here nor there, but you see I've got my top guns that need a lot of light up there, mainly the Perforatas, the Digbiana and the Tenebrosa. And I've got the ones that I don't want to be exposing to too much light over here. Those are like the Skinnery and Intermedia. I've got my Dawiana there. And down here, more Top Guns. These are actually the candidates that all live on the east side during the summer. But here I have the Durigan, I have the Siamese Doll Kiwi, and a Golf Green Hair Pig, and the Maxima, and so on and so forth. And then you can see some Rapiculus Lelias down there. They just stay where they are. And thank you, Michael, for the name, for the reminder. Lutines Blanc over there in Spike. I'm not bringing that one in. It's right, whoop, right there. I'm not bringing that one in because it is in Spike. And you can see the angle of the sun, how far it is reaching into the space now, especially where the curtain doesn't cover the trellis. So I've got direct sun happening, which for many months of the summer, this is bright, bright shade. And you can see all the dappled light now. There's the Aranti Flamium. Tetragonum, and we'll see just now where the tortilla is living because I thought I was going to need a lot more space and I don't. I can actually bring tortilla in and put her in the corner there where she's supposed to be. But this is early days and, you know, every day the shuffle seems to be different. I don't even seem to put all my orchids in the same place every day. And some nights the Tetris works beautifully indoors and then some nights I'm like going, why is this not the same as last night? What am I doing different? But yeah, it's all fun and games at this point in time. And then down here, I have a few more of the little seedlings like the Leopoldii's and other little Catlias and the one that Fernanda Nacimiento Orchids and Succulents sent me that's right there. So this is my current configuration of my south facing grow space. So let's have a look at the deep south. I classify my deep south grow space right where the Vanda hanger is over there right now. That is where normally the Engracons lives with the roots into the hedge. Well, for the time being, during the day, the Vanda hanger is here because there's a lot of light. It's a bit more protected. And despite being highlight orchids, a direct sun, even on the winter, if it hits and there is no real breeze going, it's going to react like a magnifying glass and burn my leaves. So every morning, I also move my Vanda hanger down here. I've got the Denisoniana, the Leopard Yawn, Lusneri, Lusneri Blue, and Rainbow Forest. Cousin It is right there where he has always been. That is where he will stay. Stanhopia acidensis, Hoxoniana, and my Brassabola flagellaris over there. And then you can see all the row of summer bloomers on the top. And down below, I've got my little collection of Orchid Top, all the orchids that are in that. And then here's my Rapiculus Lelia table. The ones that are in need of more protection are underneath, but they have a lot, a lot of light because of this. I hope that's not blinding you, but that is the reality at the moment. So a lot of reflecting light making it work for me. So now I'm gonna go to the west side and show you why I can't have my Vanda stand there at the moment. Here's the west side. Full sun, gorgeous. This was not planned, but um, yeah, King is enjoying what is happening here. Why I have my Vandas away from this area at this point in time, because it is very, very warm in this corner. The sun is gonna warm up the terracotta. And as you can see today, there's hardly any breeze. That curtain is hardly moving at all. And the reflection of the wall, it would all be far too much for the Vandas and they would burn even though it's just winter sun. But two hours before sunset, I will bring the Vanda hanger back up here 
and have it back where it belongs so that the orchids can enjoy at least two hours of the late afternoon sun, which is extremely weak. But on a day like this, it was fantastic. They can get direct sun and not burn. And the residual heat of this little corner, it is not exposed to the elements as much as the rest of the property. And here I can usually keep my Vandas outside, even though the forecast may say 11 degrees Celsius, but in this little corner throughout the night, it usually stays around 15 degrees Celsius. That reduces my workload in schlepping in the Vandas every day, with the exception of the Denisoniana that can tolerate in my climate much lower temperatures. But yeah, so this is the west side right now and why the Vanda stand isn't here. Under these conditions, I would roast the leaves and I don't want to do that. And then two hours before sunset, when the sun is really, really weak, the Vanda hanger goes back up here to enjoy the residual heat of this corner throughout the night. Now let's go check out Tulumnias and the east side. Does anybody remember the song, we're gonna rock down to Electric Avenue? Well, I have a blooming alley and I have a west side and an east side, but for the time being, every time I turn the corner and come through this way, I have this song in my head going, we're gonna rock down to Tulumnia Avenue. <laughs> There you go. This is my Tulumnia Avenue for the winter. Same thing applies here. I've got a breeze. They will dry out quicker. It is not as warm here, but I don't want to cook them because of their small structures. By the way, I'm talking about these even though I'm pointing the camera here, but you get my point. <laughs> but there's so much reflection. They've got a lot of light and here I can still spray them abundantly and generously and they will still dry out. There's one real, real tester during the winter for me with the Tolumnias to make sure that I give them as much water as possible without rotting the base. Because once they get put on their tray, I don't want too much humidity around them, clearly, for reasons. And I don't want to be running a fan indoors at night because that just makes the air that much cooler. I'm trying to preserve all the kinds of warm temperatures that I can for as long as possible, so yeah my Tulumnia Avenue. So in future, we'll be rocking down to Tulumnia Avenue. Anyway, what else I wanted to show you here is where I'm hanging my Brassavola perinii. This is then the lava burst and there's Eonopsis popcorn haruri. And then on top we have, you know, row number two of my Tulumnias. Fias and Maasai Red, they stay where they are at the moment. They're doing okay. I'm watching them, watching them before I move them into the covered portico area. But for now, they're okay. Right, having said all that, let's go and check out the east side. It's pretty dismal, <laughs> but let's go have a look. This is my fancy Fandangle water heating system. I put the buckets out here in the morning when the sun hits them it warms up my water. Very, very high tech, very efficient. Black buckets work best. <laughs> okay, right. So you see here I have all my kind of winter rested, supposed winter resters, but I don't do winter resting because of my setup. So I have the recently gifted to me by Fernanda Nacimiento Orchids and Succulents, the Cooksonianum is getting full blast. It's pretty much being introduced to, this is how I want you to grow um, your first winter with me, welcome. So full blast in the sun, right up against that reflective facade. My already established and nobly commercial hybrid, no ID, that's where it lives at this point in time. Full sun, I'm telling you, and so far nothing is burning, it's awesome. But yes, I do water them. I have water in the reservoir. I've already got Cooksonianum losing some leaves, but doing great, no issues there. That's not burn. When you touch the leaves of these orchids that are right here, they actually feel cool. It's pretty amazing. Not cool as in a sense, ooh, I like your touch, but cool as in a sense of temperature. And there's Tortile, which should be living and always has lived in the corner up there of my south facing portico. Well, it's living here because I was expecting rain one day and I wanted to get a good flush. And well, I haven't actually moved it since that day. The rain never came and it's just been here rocking away. So they have their chairs right there. I could move Tortilla back. For the time being, treating these guys for possible pests for me is so much easier right here, especially when the sun moves around. I get shade again and then I can work with my garlic alcohol. 
So, for the time being, I've got three nobilies here roasting away in the sun, and the leaves are cool to the touch. Ah, that's a better way of expressing it. <laughs> and here is my east stand, all empty and looking miserable. I have Dendrobium berryoda there, full light in the mornings, gets about six hours of sunshine just in its position over there. And I have my Neo Fakata right next to it. They normally live on the table right here in front of me. But you know, when there's no breeze, I still want to be careful. I did an anthocyanin video and I showed you that I was a little bit like, well, I chose to ignore the signs. And I toasted a few leaves and you know, it's not really a big deal, but if you can avoid it and still give the orchid great light, move it. This stand, however, will move to the west side once the Dama de Noche has been cut back and I have space to put it there. So there is still another little step to get my winter configuration down pat. But for the time being, these two are doing great right here. And when this stand moves to the west side, there's going to be so much more sun on the west side than on the east side, especially warm sun. And that's what I need. Warmth. Light is awesome, but I need to play with the warmth. So these two will then go back down on the table here. By the time that happens, my temperatures won't be as warm as they are today. I'm telling you, I'm standing with the sun to my back and it is just heavenly. By the way, I wear a lot of black, one specific reason, but another secondary side effect why I wear a lot of black is that the sun just warms me up and that is why I do appreciate wearing black a lot. <laughs> In case anybody asks, makes it difficult finding clothes in the dark. <laughs> all right, enough of that. So after we did all the little bit of a U-turn there, now we're back in my grow space, AKA dining room. But you see where the sun is now? It's actually touching all the plants on the lower shelf. And for that reason, I also have my Tibicinus down there in the corner. This is not, not the amount of light that it would need. It would need much, much more. This is what I have available. So the shelves are organized in such a way who gets light during the day, who is not outside, and then also obviously who is in bloom, doesn't go outside, who is in spike, doesn't go outside, and who is in bud, doesn't go outside either. Uh, the bees will come and find that anyway. But you see how the angle of the sun is now encroaching in on this space, and that includes my top guns here that I hardly move because of my hip and back issues. But this is the Guatemalensis here and the CG rolling over there. So you see, it's not 100% ideal, but this kind of sun as it pours in is good enough for what I'm trying to achieve for the winter months. Hopefully bringing them out safely to the other side. On a cloudy day, you ask. Yes, on a cloudy day. There is no sun, obviously. On a cloudy day, I will supplement with my lights. At this point in time, I do not see the point, even though that some of my orchids will not get more than three or four hours of sun a day. It's a shame. Needs must, though. I'm going to work with what I've got. And that is why you see certain orchids positioned the way they are and who goes out because of what status of growth they're in. And in future, more will go out because they will have finished blooming. So it's gonna be an interesting season for me. It's gonna be a busy one, and I'm sure all this movement will keep me nice and warm until the evening when there's nothing much to do and then I'm freezing. But hey, that's just me. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed a little bit of the orientation of what's going on here at Ninja Orchids. I would appreciate if you kept your fingers crossed for us. 300 plus orchids depend on light and warmth. I can't provide either of them during the winter. All I can do is do my best and hopefully they will be all right. And then we'll see everybody happy days outdoors again in spring of 2022. I personally can't wait. Not that I mind working with my orchids, but because I'm always fearful, I'm not doing them justice because of certain circumstances in my life. So. Testing, testing times, but we'll see. I really appreciate your time watching. Thank you so very, very much. I hope you enjoyed a quick run around. Normally I do these at the end of the month, but seeing as we're at the beginning of the month and everything's changed, I wanted to explain my principle, my thought process of what I'm trying to do here. I do apologize for the natural fertilizer. 
we get wild birds flying into the home and they come and they visit with Siliano. <laughs> nice little touch. I'm getting a whole little gaggle of a flock in here. Sometimes they stay overnight. <laughs> All right. With that being said, thank you very, very much for watching. Have yourselves a beautiful day. On one condition, please stay safe and take care. Bye.